Okay. So guys, when we talked about your AP culture, we started talking about like, okay, what is AP culture? It is nothing but a rearing of your bees. Okay. And why we want to bear, uh, you know, why are we going to rear them? Because we are going to obtain certain products. Like we're going to have honey. We are going to have beeswax. We are going to have bee venom. We are going to have royal jelly, propolis, that is bee glue and pollen grain. All these things, they are going to be obtained from your bees. And that is why we are going to rear your bees. What are the most common types? There are going to be four of them. We have your Apis dorsata, which is going to be your rock bee or wild bee, Apis indica, Indian bee, Apis flora, Apis florea, that is going to be your little bee, and Apis mellifera, that is going to be your European bee. So guys, always remember, uh, these, out of these, the Apis indica and Apis mellifera, these are the common ones which are seen in India as well. Okay, and that is why I have, like, you know, highlighted them, I have start marked them. Okay, these are the most important ones. Okay, but now, guys, when we talk about this, uh, the entire apiculture industry, you know, who are the people that, you know, you can, uh, like, you know, uh, participate out over there, who can help in out over here, you know, what are, uh, like, you know, the things that we need to do out over here, and what are the conditions that are required? So first thing is, guys, this is not a new industry at all. This has been an ancient industry. It is an age old industry. That is what we say, because, you know, this has been practiced since ages and ages and ages and ages. So that is why we call this thing as an age old industry. And now who all and who all can participate in this thing? OK, everybody, people of all different ages can participate, whether you are young, whether you are old, whether you are handicapped, everybody can participate. The only thing that we need to know out over here, guys, that here, when we talk about uh, the participants, the participants should know, OK, they should have an idea like the participants should have an idea about the behavior of the honeys, honeybees. Okay, they should have an idea about the behavior because what happens is sometimes, okay, sometimes whenever an external threat approaches a beehive. Guys, they are going to be very, very aggressive. Okay, they become very aggressive. They sting, and then they are going to like you know. Uh, one minute, there's a question out over here. Uh, yes, Sneha. Hello. Yes, Sneha, you can talk. Sneha. Hello. Sneha Sharma. Hello. Sneha Sharma, do you have any doubt? You have raised your hand. Sneha Sharma. Okay, it seems like it is by mistake. She is not responding. Okay, chal. okay, so guys, one thing that we need to know is you need to know, okay, you need to know the entire behavior of honeybees when they are going to be docile, when they are going to be aggressive, when they are going to be like friendly, when they are like in their working mode. So you need to know all about this thing out over there, guys. Okay, but now the next thing is now when we talk about the honeybees, guys, okay. What is the main product that we are going to obtain? See, we have listed all these different products, but the main product is going to be your honey. And remember, guys, this honey, this has been used in ancient times in medicine. Even in your Ayurveda, honey is one of the most important components that they have used in making what is in they've used in making uh like you know uh like a sweet uh like you know thick syrups kind of thing. Okay, so those are the main product. The main product is nothing but your honey. And this has been used in medicine since ancient times. Okay, fine. But now, when we talk about your apiculture, okay, uh, who are the most important honeybees? See, we talked about the two ones, the apis uh, indica and apis mellifera. mellifera. These are the ones which are going to be the most easiest ones to work with. And that is why they are going to be the most domesticated. Okay, so the most domesticated ones. Apis indica. And apis mellifera. 
okay and that is why you know it is really easy to work with these things okay so most of the times you know uh, like we have all the four of them okay but then in different places you will see different varieties but these are the most important ones that we will come across okay but now guys when we talk about this b culture ap culture where are we going to practice this see there are basic few requirements so this b culture is generally okay this b culture or ap culture okay this is generally followed where in a place okay this is followed in a place where there is going to be a huge area huge garden huge fruits huge trees okay it has to be a pasture kind of a thing it cannot be generally followed in like you know a concrete jungle like how it is going to be out over here okay uh sir honey collected from different species is different in taste and texture yes it is that way how it is going to be you know it not only depends upon what plant it is going to be on like you know for example you must have heard there is zambul math okay zambul math it is from the zambul uh, plant basically it has a different color it has a different taste the ones which are going to be on normal trees okay so like let's say like you know your ashoka tree or let's say uh, like you know some coniferous trees that is going to taste different the one which is going to be in orchard of your oranges that is going to taste different so what is going to make it different is the place where they are going to connect the uh, honey from the nectar from that is going to make it taste different okay plus a little bit of like you know different species they have their own enzymes and all that is going to make it a little different but main important source is which plant from where they are going to be like you know taking the nectar from that is very important okay so this is generally followed in open grasslands okay so you have like ample amounts of areas for the bees to like you know really go find nectar pollinate and all so open grasslands next is like you know you can go in pastures okay then we can have orchards now generally people what people do is they will believe in this thing orchards because this gives them the control of controlling the taste or flavor of honey okay and here the most important thing is no matter whatever you choose you need to have a large number of fruits flowers and trees besides them fruits flowers trees etc like okay, in its vicinity that is the one which is going to give it like you know the uh, the complete taste and the flavor but now guys let's imagine okay you have had all these requirements okay you have started you know doing ap culture okay now let's say for example you are doing artificial you are following artificial thing okay so in artificial thing what are the requirements okay some people what they do is they are going to take the actual beehive and then they are going to propagate beehives on plants now that is going to be really really difficult it is a very time consuming process so what we do is we are going to go for some artificial culture okay so let me just put down what are the requirements okay and i'm sure you have seen this thing you must have seen this thing what are the requirements for apiculture so guys you must have seen the apiculture boxes okay so what are we going to require is the beehive boxes what is the most important thing in beehive boxes is guys you are going to see that uh you know these boxes and now they come in different different types and all okay so we have different things but let me just give you a basic plain idea so you are going to have a box something like this okay this box it is going to be some feet deep like this okay Okay, now there are like different different things. Okay, now different varieties. I am going to show you the one which they have put in your textbook as well. Okay, but this thing. Now the general idea is what you know. This thing you are going to have some mesh like plates. So let's say I am going to have some mesh like plates like this. So you have this as the top portion, and you have the honeycomb plates. Okay, so the honeycomb plates it is going to be like you know acting as a base for them. so let's imagine this is like hexagon 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 kind of thing okay because they will always form the comb the bee hive in the honey comb form kind of this thing okay so let's imagine this is going to be there throughout that entire thing you are going to take several plates in this and you are going to lock it down out over here so you will be seeing one plate two plate okay third plate like this okay a fourth plate out over here something like this, extending throughout and you will see that you know honeycomb pattern out over here out over here out over here everywhere 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 
Now, what do we need to do? Okay, now see, we need to propagate the beehive out over here because unless and until the beehive isn't there, you're not going to get honey out of it. So what we do is, guys, the person who is going to be handling this beehive, okay, he needs to know exactly what type of your honeybees are going to be and how you need to identify them. Because what we will do is, guys, we are going to take one queen bee and that queen bee, we are going to isolate it from its hive Okay, and let's imagine these are all your, uh, you know, honeycomb patterns. Huh? I'm just drawing circles, circles, circles. It's taking a lot of time. Okay, so now what is going to happen is, guys, you are going to take the queen bee. Okay, the queen bee is the one which is the most important. Guys, why, you know, because the queen bee, she is going to have her own fan following. Okay, because she has her own loyal servants, loyal worker bees. So what we need to do is we need to take this queen bee and now we just need to place it into this. Now, the moment I place it into this, guys, you are going to see that all the worker bees that are there, all the worker bees, they are going to follow this queen bee and they start making a new hive out over here. What are we going to do? We are going to cover this thing from the top. Okay, so we have a top like this and we are going to place it out over here. And keeping some amount of space for the honeybees to go out in and out, in and out, in and out. Not it is like, you know, completely covered. So you're going to have a little bit of space for them to move in and out. And then guys, then the magic is going to happen. Then you're going to see that this her queen bee, she is now going to dictate all the worker bees to produce huge amounts of your beehive out over here. And then on the same lines, they are going to go collect your honey from or nectar from your, you know, different flowers and all. They come out over here. They are going to deposit. Then they are going to spit in their saliva. And now they are going to convert the, you know, the nectar into your honey. And guys, slowly, slowly, when you actually look from here, okay, you are going to see that the entire beehive being formed like this inside. Okay, you can see it actually. Now, there are different methods by which we can now remove the honey from here. Okay, now in some, the new advanced ones, okay, the new honey bee boxes, you just need, you have a knob out over here. You just switch the knob, you just turn it like this, okay like this the moment you turn it this entire arrangement guys it is going to shift like you know it goes one up one down one up one down and then what happens from the bottom you have actually an outlet so whatever honey is collected guys that is going to start trickling down because this beehive okay so see let's imagine what i'm trying to say so your normal beehive at uh, the honeycomb pattern is going to be this way when you switch this knob when you turn it up you are going to see that the left part, it goes up, the right part, it goes down. Now, the entire thing cannot stay out over here. So what happens? All the honey is just going to trickle down. And then fresh and pure honey is just going to come out from the bottom. You can just collect it in jars without even troubling the honeybees. Okay. And then you just collect it into the jars and then you can use it for your own purpose. If you want to sell it off, you can just sell it that way. This is how it works. Okay. This is one type of your this thing. Or let's say you are following the old pattern. Okay, then what are you going to do? Then I will have to remove this thing. Okay, so guys, let me just put down. So what are the requirements? Now I'm showing you the old pattern, guys. Okay, the old pattern, what we have to do. So first thing, guys, we need to have like beehive boxes. Okay, this is the most important thing. Okay, chalo. so beehive boxes. Second thing, what? Now, guys, you know what? We are going to have these sheets. Okay, so the second thing, we have the sheets with honeycomb pattern. Okay, third thing, guys, now what happens is the moment you want to retrieve honey from this thing by the old method, I cannot just like, you know, go grab one sheet out of the honeycomb sheet and bahar nikal ke, you are like moving out. No, 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 no. It is not that way. You have to be extremely careful. So what we need to do is first, when you approach out over here, guys, you need to disperse all the bees which are besides this and the bees which are going to be inside. So that, you know, there is a minimum number of these and they should not sting you at all. So what we need is we need first thing, a bee wheel. Okay, what is a bee wheel? This is nothing but a bee suit. You must have seen, you know, the space kind of suit that the bee people, the, you know, the handlers wear. 
so that you know the bees don't sting it is that veil is what you know the face is covered by you know that uh, burqa jaisa okay that you know jali 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 okay so that what happens is none of the bees can go into the bee veil it is that way veil means that you know the face uh, shield kind of a thing okay like burqa ka shield kaisa rehta hai the head gear it is exactly in the same lines okay so we have this bee veil now when i approach out over here i need to disperse the bees now for that what are we going to use guys we are going to have something that is called as a smoker so you are going to put some fire inside of it and then you are going to generate some smoke and you allow the smoke out over here the moment you have the smoke guys immediately you are going to feel i mean the bees are going to feel that oh there is some fire nearby and they need to wake it this place so immediately they start leaving so we have a smoker okay fine then what now we need to handle this thing okay so to handle this first thing we are going to require hand gloves okay now once we have the hand gloves guys now we need to remove this top portion off then only we can reach this sheets right so you are going to have an uncapping knife so you get an uncapping knife okay the moment you have this uncapping knife guys you are going to remove this ha ah, one more thing you are also going to remove uh, require your uh, gum boots okay gum boots i forgot about that gum boots or your gum shoes basically uh, you know in your rainy season you wear those that is what okay then after this guys after you have the uncapping knives now you are going to remove that uh, this thing okay the uh, the sheet okay but now when you remove the sheet guys now you need two things what you need to know is you need to find out because when the sheet is removed from here okay so let's say the sheet has been removed so you will see that the queen bee is going to be attached to it somewhere or uh, which or she might be present anywhere so let's say the queen bee is out over here i need to remove this queen bee safely i need to make sure that she does not die so what do i do guys i am going to make use either of nets okay there is going to be a net okay to catch this thing or you can also make use of this bee excluder okay either nets or queen bee excluder okay So now, once this queen bee has been excluded, now you can proceed. Now, what are you going to do, guys? You remove this entire wax. Okay, so you have the knife. <clears throat> okay, you are going to have knife for removing the upper wax. So you remove the upper wax so that this entire sheet becomes like nice and clear. Okay, for removal of outer wax. okay for removal of outer wax okay this is the initial thing then what are you going to do guys now once this entire sheet is like nice and clear so let's say the sheet is clear here but now you are going to see that there is honey and there is going to be little bit of wax see you cannot like you know remove the entire wax now what are we going to do guys we are going to squeeze this thing and we are going to put this thing in a centrifuge a big centrifuge machine Okay, this centrifuge machine is going to be something like this, huge, like this. Okay, and it has like you know uh, places where you know we can attach these things. So you attach it out over here like that, and then this goes on the rotating like this, zoop 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 like this and like this. And then what happens? All that thing, whatever that is present inside, like you know inside, this is going to be dispersed out because of the centrifugal force. Zoop 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 zoop. like this and then what happens after a few moments of like you know centrifugation you will see from the bottom all the honey and wax mixture is going to come now what do you do guys you are going to just keep it as it is so when you keep it as it is in this thing you will see honey is going to come at the bottom because it is going to be a little on the heavier side and wax is going to come on the top you are just going to separate the wax from the top by just normal filtration and you are going to take the honey the moment you take this honey this is now going to be filtered once more and then you are going to send it for your packaging packaging distribution and your marketing etc and this wax whatever we have got from the top guys now you are going to convert this wax into your wax cubes so you are going to make like you know 1 1 kg cubes like this like this like this and then this is going to be sold into the market then this can be used for making your candles or making your you know wax articles or something so that can be used so this is all what we need to do okay 
in order to obtain your honey everybody okay with this thing guys have you understood the entire process what really happens out over here how we can go for this thing uh can you read out ninth one uh ninth one is queen b excluder someone is saying one right uh, uh can you keep the most domesticated most domesticated are the these two apis indica and uh, apis mellifera now all the four can be used is not that you know all the all four cannot be used all four can be used but then these are the two most easy to work with that is why ha yes go on if you have doubts go on okay so guys this was the you know the old ancient technique that i have to talked about this the rotating knob one this is the most recent technique right and now they have launched this product okay into the market okay so this is the newest technique and the another uh, age old techniques okay the age old technique is another one which is going to be something like this in your textbook guys they have given this kind of a thing okay which is nothing but exactly what we are doing but then uh, uh, this thing okay it's the same kind of thing in a more detailed explanation uh, explain uh, explanatory manner okay just have a look guys if you are okay then we can move ahead we have to talk about like you know how is this thing really uh, going to be like you know then what is polymorphism in your bees okay guys if everybody is okay we can move ahead with the process uh can you repeat the hexagon testing once okay see the, the newest technology now what is this you know it says that you know you should not disturb the hive as such okay you should not you should not like you know disturb their community which is out over here so basically these days you know we have like you know the rules and regulation which are governing the cruelty to animals for human benefit that kind of thing like you know we have the cpc sea okay then we have uh, like you know the peta organizations okay so what they say is like you know Uh, see these honey bees they are working 24/7 they are working overtime and they are making honey for us you should not give them you know like you know every now and then you should not be like you know you break their hives and let them make new hives rather you give them some some kind of a stable structure by just you know they will come and they will deposit the honey and they will start their own work that is what their idea is so based on that idea the new variety that has come is this so in this what happens is uh see this is like you know the hexagon because they are going to produce these hexagons 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 only okay the bee hive if formation is in hexagons only yes so i will just give you an idea so let me just draw two of these so you will get a complete clue what exactly is happening okay so let's imagine guys these are two rows of that honey bee Okay, behind. Let's say. Now, originally it is this way. Now, what happens is when you turn the knob, which is going to be at the sides. Now, what are they going to do? Okay, this entire plate is made in such a way that now, the first part and the second part it starts dislocating, meaning it just start moving up and down, up and down, up and down. So, what happens is everywhere you are going to see now that honeycomb pattern. It is now going to be like dislocated. so you will see something like this okay now if you are going to see something like this then whatever honey that is deposited into this will it stay in its place the answer is no you will see that because this entire thing has hive see where is that you know this uh, this thing you are going to see it right in the center okay so this is that line where you are going to see that you know it's going to change its this thing 
So now the moment it becomes like this, see guys, you will not see any honey staying out over here. This honey, whatever that is there, it is going to flow down. Then what you can just collect it from the bottom. Now, once you have like collected your honey, then you don't want anything extra. Then what you can do once again, you turn the knob. Once again, you turn the knob, you are going to get this honeycomb kind of your pattern. So what it does is it reduces the stress of the honeybees. So uh, to like, you know, create their hives again and again, again and again. So this is a new product which has come up into the market. So not earlier seen. That is why, you know, they have never spoken on this thing. This is what just I'm telling you how it works. Okay. Anyways, so guys, now we need to talk about your, uh, once again, like how is your polymorphism in honeybees? Okay, now guys, we have already talked about this thing. So we know how things are going to be. Okay, so polymorphism in honeybees. So if you look at honeybees, guys, what have we said? There are going to be three types of your honeybees. We are going to have queen bee. We are going to have worker bee. And we are going to have your drones. But now, guys, if you remember, when we talked about your sex determination, the sex determination in your honeybees is dependent upon the number of sets of chromosome. Can anybody give me quickly what is 2N for your honeybees? Quickly, 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 guys. 2N for honeybees. Very nice. Komal has given me the right answer. Waiting for the others to answer. Guys, anybody else? Only one person. Anybody, anybody? Strange. Only one person has answered. Nobody else, I guess. Nobody else has read the chapter, I guess. Anyways, in your polymorphism basically when we talk about this what is 2n guys 2n in your honeybees is 32 so when we talk about your queen bee what have we said queen bee is 2n worker bee is 2n but drones they are going to be n only once again how many uh, chromosomes you have queen bee it is going to be 32 worker this is 32 and your drones this is going to be 16 so out of this guys when we talk about your queen bee this is the one which is going to be fertile and because she is fertile she is uh, Because she is fertile, guys, she is going to show you your ovum formation. This worker bee, this is going to be sterile. Okay, this is going to be sterile. And then we have drones. They are going to be fertile, guys. But now what is the most important thing? They are going to produce sperms by mitosis. They produce sperms by mitosis. Okay, so this is the most important thing. Guys, then we have talked about your parthenogenesis and all. So I hope you guys have an idea about that. Okay. So now the last thing out over here, guys, is what is going to make your entire apiculture successful? Okay. So things that are going to be required for successful beekeeping. Okay. So for successful beekeeping, I just mentioned. So first thing, guys, what are we going to know? The first thing is the person who is going to be handling. Okay, he needs to know the behavior. Okay, this is the most important thing. Okay, when it is the right time to extract honey, when it is not, when they are friendly, when they are aggressive, when they are timid, when they are like working. So he knows the behavior of the bees. Okay, first thing. Second thing, guys, now, the second most important thing is selection of location. Like I said, you know, you need to make use of some open grasslands. Okay. So, or pastures or, you know, besides an arena where there are a large number of your uh, flowers, fruits, etc., orchards. Okay. So, selection of location. Then next thing is selection of your proper breed as well. Which honeybee you are going to use, that is also going to be important. Then, Catching and hiving of swarms. Okay, meaning uh, you have to always, like, you know, see which of them is going to be better. How are they going to be, like, you know, working and who's going to be more efficient. So catching and hiving of swarms. 
Okay. And then, like I said, we need to know the selection of breed. The ones which is going to be very, very important is your Apis dorsata and your uh, uh, the Apis indica and your Apis mellifera. Okay. Also, know like you know here whenever we do this thing, guys. Important thing, when you are doing this artificially, there is high chances of contamination. So you require good amounts of cleanliness. Plus, you require good amounts of sunlight. Okay. Next, you need to have a clean source. Okay, a clean source of like you know your fruits, flowers, etc. Something that is going to be uh, like very important. And now, guys, you know what? I don't know whether you are aware of this or no. These drones, guys, these drones, they are like bodyguards of your hive. Okay. So I will tell you what happens. Okay. So let's say this is the beehive. Okay. Now, in your nature. Okay. So in nature, it is going to come like this. The drones, they are going to be, okay, uh -huh, I forgot to show you the picture of drones. Okay, so let's see the drones. They are going to be this way. Okay, they are big ones, guys. Okay, like a really big, stout kind of thing. So these are the ones which act as your bodyguards. Okay, so let's say these are bodyguards kind of thing. Okay, your entire beehive is going to be protected by these drone bees. Okay. Now, what happens, you know, see the worker bees, they are going to go in search of honey. But sometimes what happens, you know, the flowers and the fruits, they are naturally decomposing. The moment they are decomposing, now what happens is, you know, uh, the fruit is going to start producing alcohol. Now, technically, these worker bees, they are like really, really nicely attracted to alcohol. Now, what happens? They are going to go and instead of taking the nectar, they are going to suck the alcohol out of that, you know, decomposing fruit. Now, what happens? Suddenly, they are high. So, when these kinds of worker bees, okay, the worker bees which are really high, they come. Now, they are like not going to fly in a straight line. They go wakada, tigada, wakada, tigada, wakada, tigada, just like how humans are. And when they want to enter into the hive, these drone bees, they are like really, really strict. They are going to set an example. So do any of these honeybees, like, you know, who is like drunk on hooch, we call it as, you know, the decomposing thing. These are the ones they are going to start beating the shit out of this thing. They start actually literally beating this honeybee so that she, whatever high she has, it goes away. And this sets an example for everyone that you should not be consuming alcohol or any of the products which are like, you know, uh, generating alcohol. And you should maintain like, you know, some kind of, uh, a proper composure in the beehive that is the job of drones you know i have seen one documentary on this and it is an amazing documentary also guys these honeybees they have a method of communication so wherever the location of honey is like you know where let's say there are like large number of flowers out over here let's say this uh honeybee she has come she has come to know now what is going to happen she is going to come out over here she is going to tell everyone that yo there is a source of you know flowers so she goes besides these the honeycomb like these are several rounds then she is going to make an angle with the sun everybody else is going to look at that and then they come to know the direction of the flower so this is again a very important thing like you know how these people are going to communicate with one another Okay, then apart from that, guys, we are going to require uh, provision of water. Okay, so you also require a source of clean water for these. Okay, and apart from that, you know, maintenance of proper conditions, proper atmospheric conditions. That is it. These are going to monitor and these are going to make sure that your beekeeping uh, entire uh, this thing, the industry is going to be like really, really working properly. So that's it. That is what we need to know. Lastly, guys, one important thing. Whenever we talk about your bees, guys, around 80 to 90 percent of the world's pollination that is going to be brought about by your honeybees only. So bees, they are the largest pollinators. They are the largest, best pollinators. Okay, 80 to 90 percent of pollination is brought about by them. Okay, that's it. That is what we need to know about your entire epiculture, guys. Okay, so just have a look if everybody is okay. The last part, if anybody has any doubts, you can ask. Yes, 
राइट एनी एवरी विशेष टू आस्क एनी थिंग प्लीज गो हेड और एल्स वी गो टू मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन एंड दैट इज योर फिशरीज uh can you explain parthenocarpy in bees once again yes so guys what happens is see when the queen bee okay so so we have said this queen bee this is going to lay eggs okay so this is she is 32 right so she is going to undergo meiosis and she is going to give eggs so let's say this is one egg this is another egg okay but now if she has undergone meiosis how many chromosomes in the egg guys it is going to be 16 16 right now what happens on the other side we are going to have drones okay now drones how many chromosome drone is going to have 16 chromosome but now what is this drone going to show you the drone is going to show you mitosis and in his sperms you are going to see 16 chromosomes now this sperm can go and meet with this now what is going to happen you are going to get 32 in the zygote but now guys this 32 what can happen this can either be your queen bee or this can be your worker bee okay because both of them they are going to be 32 only what is going to differentiate whether this is going to be queen bee or not this this uh, you know if the larvae is fed on the royal jelly then this is going to be your queen bee if they are fed on normal stuff then this is going to be your worker bee that is the difference but now guys let's say we have this 16 okay now if this remains unfertilized then what then this directly converts into a drone this directly converts into a drone and what is this process where it directly converts this is known as parthenogenesis parthenogenesis means without fertilization so without fertilization we are going to convert into your drone so can it happen that uh, the other bees don't accept the queen bee no that is technically it is not generally seen but i'll just give you an idea of what you know situation that you are talking about okay so let's imagine we have a bee hive like this okay and in this bee hive this is our main queen bee okay so let's imagine this is our main queen bee she has given the rise to offsprings and then you are going to have the new queen bees out over here coming so i am just showing one new queen bee now what happens is the original worker bees from over here they will not listen to this new queen bee they will listen to the older queen bee only it is this way so this is the situation so then what happens you know after much deliberation this queen bee is going to take a squad of few worker bees okay few drones and she is going to assign it to her then she is going to leave the beehive with that small squad and then she is going to make her own beehive this is how it happens okay all right okay chalo so guys let's try to move ahead let's try to see the next one the next one we have is your fisheries okay so fisheries are also like you know very very simple we just need to understand the essence of fisheries okay so guys when we talk about your fisheries okay what is this fisheries called as this fisheries is also known as your pisciculture okay this is also known as pisciculture okay now when we talk about this pisciculture guys pisciculture can be divided into actually three different types okay so basically when we talk about pisciculture or fisheries 
they are going to be mainly of three different types and what are these guys first is we are going to have inland fisheries okay so one is inland second is your estuarine fisheries or estuaries basically and the third one is going to be directly your marine fisheries okay so three different types of your fisheries so let's try to see one by one how is it going to be like so guys when we talk about your inland fisheries okay inland inland fisheries so basically what happens you know guys india we have an extensive you know the sea line basically okay or the coastline we have around 40 to 50 lakh acres okay so 40 to 50 lakh okay 40 to 50 lakh acres okay of your entire coastline and guys when we have this 40 to 50 lakh acres of the entire coastline guys we are going to have like you know a large number of things which are going to be inside of it so what are we talking about guys so we are talking about the rivers okay so you know because everything is going to be like you know coastline and then it is going to be the ones that are going to be inside of it okay the rivers the ponds everything is included out over here so we are going to have the rivers the ponds the lakes okay so all of these these are going to be in your inland fisheries but now <clears throat> but now when we talk about your inland fisheries guys okay generally in your inland fisheries we are going to get your fresh water ones okay most of the times and then when we go into the marine ones guys and uh, there there we are going to get your uh, the marine fishes okay so we have fresh fishes we have marine fishes we will talk about this a little later but just to give you an idea second thing we have is your estuarine fisheries now guys what is an estuary estuary is basically the shallow region where the river or the sea is going to meet the land so it is going to be basically like you know a small uh, you know a sh uh, like you know it's uh, a plateau kind of region with a little a little layer of water on top of it so you can even stand in this region and you're going to see that okay because of its uh, the way it is going to be you are going to see that all the alluvial soil is going to come and get deposited all the rich organic thing gets deposited out over here plus because of that you will see all the fishes and all they will try trial you know they'll tend to go and uh, you know look locate themselves out over there yes okay so somewhat of that types so you are going to see that this is your estuaries okay so uh in your exams guys they ask you this question okay in your uh, this thing your uh, your board papers basically what is estuarine fishery so estuary is nothing sorry <coughs> okay so once again this is estuary is nothing but this is a place where the river meets the sea like it is something like you know you can call it as a sangam kind of a thing okay something of that sort okay and now guys even this estuary and fisheries this we have like loads of estuary and fisheries okay again once again we have an extensive long coastline so once again we have huge amounts of this thing and then after that guys we have your marine fisheries this is going to be the maximum one that we generally follow guys this is going to be followed in your open seas okay so this is going to be seen in your open seas out over there guys okay open seas open oceans and we have open seas oceans etc and as i said you know we have like an, an extensive coastline okay so along the coastline and only you're going to have this thing happening so along the coastline we are going to have this thing like you know roughly about 7500 kilometers okay 7500 kilometers is like really 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 huge so you can take like you know you can do this marine fishing okay in all these areas but now guys the next important thing is which are the fishes we are going to go for so guys we are going to have like you know few different fishes which we generally capture and which we are going to you know sell it and which have like you know high value also so first one we have your freshwater fishes okay 
So let's try to see what are these freshwater fishes. So what do we have, guys? In your freshwater ones, we are going to have your katla. Okay, katla, katla. Okay, I will just tell you how it works. Okay, so we have uh, rohu. We have katla, katla. We have your labio, uh, that is your rohita, rohu basically, labio, rohita, katla, katla. Then we have mrigala. Okay, and along with that, we have, you know, a little bit of your carps kind of thing. You know, we have these like, you know, common carps kind of thing, which we call as silver carp. Okay, uh, we have the other one, which is going to be your common car, grass carp. Okay, these are like, you know, small, 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 small fishes. So, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now, guys, when we talk about your marine fishes, marine fishes, they are going to be different. And these are the ones which we are generally used to having it. Okay. So, who are we talking about in this case, guys? In this case, we are talking about your Bombay duck, Bombil. Okay. Bombay duck is known as Harpedon Neherius. Okay. So, not there for you, but still. Okay. So, this is going to be your Bombay duck. You are going to have your pomfret. Okay. You are going to have your Bangda. That is your mackerel. Okay. So, Bangda. Then we are going to have, uh, you know, uh, something that is called as your sardine. Okay, etc, etc, etc. So guys, these are some of the most important fishes that we will capture. Okay, but now the thing is, let's say, you know, we want to go for fish farming. Now, what is this fish farming? Where are we going to do this thing, guys? Okay, how are we going to do this thing? So basically, guys, if we are planning, like, you know, we are going to have a big land, okay, or let's say we have like, you know, a two or three acres of land, and we want to start rearing of your fishes out over there. What are the different things that we are going to require? Okay, but once again, guys, when we talk about this fisheries, okay, uh, what is this fisheries actually going to include? Okay, the PC culture, we... Uh, I'll just quickly put this down. So when we talk about pisciculture or your fisheries, guys, this is a huge term, okay? And this is actually a branch of biology which deals with, okay, one, this is also going to deal with the rearing of fishes, catching of fishes, processing, farming, and marketing, okay? So first, uh, rearing, catching, Processing, fish farming, and marketing. Okay, and marketing of fish. And along with fish, we are also going to have your other products as well. Okay, other products means what? Some byproducts of fish that we get. For example, we have something called as icing glass. Okay, so or we have fish glue. Okay, or we have like, you know, fish bones. Okay, so these are all also going to be uh, like, you know, this thing. And this is not only restricted. Okay, this fish farming or pisciculture or fisheries. This is not only restricted only for fishes. But along with that, we also have your shell fishes. We are going to have your crabs. We are going to have lobsters. We are also going to have your prawns. All of them are going to be, uh, you know, they are going to be like cultured. Okay, oysters, etc, etc, etc. Everything is going to be included out over here. Okay, but now let's say we want to start a fishery like you know, you have some uh, land in, in your position and you want to start a fishery out over there. So how is this thing really going to move ahead? Okay, so for fisheries construction, Okay, what do we really want? Okay, now this is like, you know, we are trying to produce some inland fishery kind of a thing. Okay, so what are we going to require is first, we have to have the site. Okay, so selection of site where we are going to do this thing. Okay, fine. Chalo, selection of site. The second thing is, guys, we need to create large ponds out over there. So we are going to have pond excavation. Okay, so that we can have like, you know, big, 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 big ponds out over there. Now, once we have ponds, guys, 
we need to have different kinds of ponds. So first thing is we are going to have stocking pond. Stocking pond is what, you know, guys, whatever new young ones that we are going to get and all which we are going to store, that is going to be your stocking pond. Now, when they are going to grow, then what happens is, guys, from the stocking uh, uh, this thing, okay, so we are going to have different kinds of tank. So stocking tank, then we are going to put it into your nursery tank, okay, then we are going to use it in your rearing tank. So nursery, it goes into the nursery pond, okay, nursery pond or a rearing pond, I mean, after this, we are going to go into the rearing pond, okay, pond can also be interchanged with your tanks guys okay and then after that you know we are going to like you know once it has been red and all then we are going to remove it and we are going to see what is exactly happening how we can uh, do this thing then along with this guys what else are we going to require see we require the most important thing the water resource now why water resource guys you know because whether you are following marine fisheries marine fishery out over here or whether you are for uh, you know following your fresh fisheries depending upon that the water source needs to be selected okay and accordingly you need to maintain the ph of the water the pressure of the water the salt concentration that is going to be all there but then apart from that guys now you need to feed the fishes and for that you are going to require manure apart from manure you're also going to require some supplementary feed Okay, so manure, you're going to require supplementary feed, etc, etc, etc. And then after doing this thing, now you can start off with your own fishery. Now, guys, sometimes what happens is whenever we talk about fishery, most people, they will not rely on only one fish. They will rely on many fishes. So generally, if you go for only one fish, like let's say you are, you know, cultivating only your pomfret. Okay, your pamphlet, then that kind of a fishery, we call this thing as monoculture fishery. But there is a little risk in monoculture fishery. So what we always do is we will generally tend to go for your polyculture. That means many, uh, this thing, many species at the same time. So polyculture fisheries. And guys, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, in Mumbai itself, you know, we have this fisheries. Okay, I don't remember. I had been to this place. It is an amazing experience. Okay, they have like big, 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 big raining ponds and all. They take you for a visit. They are going to show you what exactly is happening out over there, how you identify the cultures, how you identify which fish is like good, which fish is bad. It's an amazing experience. Okay, so we have this. Indian fisheries something something I don't really recollect the name but Indian fisheries if you have ever got get a I mean if you ever get a chance to go out over there okay but now guys you know what chalo so let's say we have prepared this thing and now we have prepared our product after rearing and then we are like you know we have you know allowed the uh, the organisms to grow and all now it is time to harvest them meaning we need to catch so what is the main thing out over here See, the main problem with fishes is fish is a highly perishable substance. So even if you even if you like, you know, uh, don't take proper care of it, if you just overlook it, then immediately it is going to start undergoing decomposition and then it is going to be a big problem, guys. OK, then it is going to be a big problem. So then what we need to immediately store this thing in such a manner that, you know, it doesn't uh, undergo spoilage. So what are we going to do, guys? OK. So after harvesting, okay, the most important thing, it is going to be you're saving this thing. So after harvesting, we need to save it. How are we going to save it? How are we going to preserve it? So we have different methods. So the first one, guys, it is going to be your freeze drying. So immediately you are going to take this thing and in a flash freeze kind of a thing, okay, you are going to completely dry this thing. So that is called as freeze drying. Second thing is your normal freezing. You just take this thing and you put it into the freezer over a period of time. Then it is going to uh, like, uh, you know, it's going to convert into a, a icy thing. Okay. But now if you think about these two freeze drying and freezing guys, what do you think? Which of them is going to be more better for the product to keep it fresh, freeze dry or freezing? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now guys, the answer is actually freeze dry. Because in freeze drying, what happens, you know, 
you are going to see that you know you take this uh, fish you are going to expose it to like minus 40 degrees celsius minus 50 degrees celsius in that situation what happens you know that ice like water that is present inside its body zop in in a flash of a moment it gets converted into ice so here you know you don't have that ability like you know to form that ice crystals then they are going to be like you know nice and long then they are going to poke into the muscles and destroy the fish no here it is going to be instantaneous here what happens is slowly slowly the ice crystals are going to form and they start destroying the tissues so freeze dry is more expensive but this is the best thing to store then comes your freezing okay but then apart from this there are many other things you are going to have like your smoke drying okay smoke drying is when you are like you know uh, you, you have taken some wood you have burnt some wood and you know you've just you know smoke uh, you've just smoked it and you have like you know kept your fishes on the that wood and let it dry that kind of drying so smoke drying just like that we can just place it under the sun that is going to be sun drying but then after that you are going to have salting you are going to add huge amounts of salt and keep it in the sun that is nothing but your salting these are going to be some of the most important ones that we generally follow okay everyone all right with this but guys see we said you know fishes are not only red for their meat but then there are some other products as well so what are the other by products of this industry so let's try to see so if we talk about the other by products what are we going to have first thing we are going to have fish oil guys you must have heard omega oil omega fish oil or you must have heard seven seas cod liver oil right all that is nothing but your fish oil this is really really rich, a rich in your omega uh, okay uh, omega fatty acids so very very important then we are going to go for your fish meat okay so this is also very important now whatever meat that you cannot use the leftover parts they can be converted into manure okay so that is going to be once again a very important thing then as i said you know we are going to have fish glue and we are also going to have isin glass okay and this isin glass now what is this basically this is going to be a compound that we uh, obtain from this thing and this is generally used in paints soaps etc used in paints soaps etc okay but now guys you know what we also make use of fish scales the earlier lipsticks that we used to get guys the earlier lipsticks those used to contain fish scales powdered fish scales okay it was that way then another thing that is you know when we talk about this uh, whale vomit okay if you know blubber that they call it as okay that whale vomit that is also like you know really really sought after so if you are going to go into marine fishery some people will actually hunt down uh, this thing the whale vomit you know why is this whale vomit used for it is an important ingredient of perfumes that is what it is used for guys okay so that way so this is what we really need to know about your uh, this thing your entire uh, fishy culture okay so guys once again have a look at this thing then we will move ahead with the next part guys Okay, guys, everybody, okay with this? Fine. Let's move ahead. Okay, okay. 
ओके चलो गाइस द नेक्स्ट वन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव नाउ वी हैव ओनली टू ऑफ देम रिमेनिंग वन इज योर सेरिकल्चर एंड वन इज योर लाक कल्चर ओके सो क्विकली लेट्स पुट दिस थिंग डाउन गाइस सो वी हैव द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज सेरिकल्चर Okay, so what is sericulture? Sericulture is nothing but rearing of your silkworms, and for what, guys? This is nothing for your production of your silk. So that way, so this is rearing of silkworms to obtain silk. Okay, and guys, which is the organism that we are going to use? Which caterpillar that we are going to use? The name of that we call this thing as Bombyx mori. Okay, so this is the most one, most important one, guys. The Bombyx mori, and Bombyx mori, guys, this is responsible for your best silk, that is your mulberry silk. This is best one. Now, guys, after your bombyx mori, okay, we have another type of silk which is going to be your airy and tussar. Okay, so mulberry silk. Then we have your airy silk and tussar silk. Okay, but these silk they are going to be a little of the inferior quality. Okay, not like you know it is like terribly bad, but this is a little bit of your inferior quality as compared to your mulberry silk, and that is why bombyx mori is the most sought after. uh this thing okay the silk one okay but now how is this thing really going to happen like you know what is the life cycle of this thing so let's try to see what really happens so guys in your textbook they have given like a very very nice uh, this thing okay and exactly it is that way only so there is no difference so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull out that picture which i had downloaded from your textbook and i will paste it out over here in the life cycle okay so let's just try to see what is really going to happen okay so guys here when we talk about this thing okay so where does this life really start from okay so guys this is the one which is going to start from your silk moth okay so basically it starts with a female silk moth so this way so this is our female Now, guys, what happens is when we have this female silk moth, when she is going to be like you know, you know, pregnant, when she is going to be like you know, uh, about to lay eggs, what is she going to do? She is going to take the eggs and she is going to find out one specific spot where you are not going to see much disturbance from air or much disturbance from your natural environment, and she is going to lay the eggs onto one minute, someone. Okay, she can lay the eggs onto your leaf. Okay, now the leaves they are going to act as a support. Now initially, you know, you are going to see that these eggs they are going to be sticking out over here, but slowly, slowly, what is going to happen, guys? You are going to see that they are now going to hatch and they are going to convert into the caterpillar. Okay, so this is nothing but your caterpillar. So, guys, what happens is okay. when we talk about this caterpillar what is this caterpillar guys the caterpillar is actually nothing but the larva okay this is the larva of your uh, this thing okay but now guys you are going to see that after this larva okay now there is one step which is actually missing out over here i don't know how they missed this thing okay but i'll just uh, you know just make that change out over here right so after it converts into the larva guys now this is going to require huge amounts of food so now what it does is see you are going to have the same leaf but now this is going to start eating the leaf okay now it is going to eat the leaf from the side it is going to start eating the leaf from the center and you will see these 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 holes they are going to come okay now what happens once this is like you know this is going to be like completely done then you are going to see she guys they have like you know messed this thing up a little bit theek mm -hmm. hai i will just show you so guys what happens is after this larva stage okay you are going to see that after they have eaten this uh, entire leaf you are going to see that now this is going to increase in size it is going to become like really really tapora types okay it becomes like like this it becomes something of this sort okay and now guys this is actually ready to go into the next stage 
Okay, so this is going to go into the next stage. Now, what happens, guys? What is this next stage, guys? The next stage is nothing but your pupa. So now this is going to find one spot onto the leaf or on that plant where it can hang itself. And now it is going to attach itself with the help of this thread. And then it is going to spin a nice cocoon over itself. So you are going to see that the larvae. Okay, so. Okay, so it is. This larva is now going to convert into the next step. Okay, so you will see that the larva is inside. Okay, what is this next step called, guys? This is step is nothing but this is called as the pupa stage. And here we call this thing the as the caterpillar. So the larva was known as caterpillar. Here the pupa we are going to call this thing as chrysalis. This is known as chrysalis. So now what happens, guys? See this larva. Okay, this is now going to like you know this is going to be inside out over here and now what it does is it is going to start covering itself with some sticky fibroin material and that is nothing but your silk that is basically your silk fiber and by using the silk fiber guys this is going to form a cocoon now what happens guys this cocoon basically all the changes they are going to take place inside the cocoon okay now 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 guys understand okay let's imagine i am showing you that cocoon okay so let's say we have this pupa stage okay where we have got the chrysalis okay fine and this thing it has spinned the cocoon onto the top of itself now i told you what is this cocoon going to have this cocoon is going to have your silk fibers right so you are going to see the silk fibers present in this cocoon so guys you know what how do we obtain silk we are not going to allow the caterpillar to complete its life cycle because next thing is what it is going to convert into your moth it is going to convert into your butterfly right so that is not really going to happen what we are going to see we take these things okay we take the cocoon and we are going to drop this thing in boiling water and now drop this thing in boiling water so you are actually boiling and killing these silkworms inside and this is not just one silkworm you are going to have like cages and cages of worth of these silkworms put into that boiling water once then this is done then you are going to see that because of the water and uh, you know because of a little bit of treatment you are going to see that this silk is now going to separate and it starts coming out but inside what has happened to this guy this guy is already dead and that is why in the recent times peter has come up with yes yes absolutely one sari has so many deaths behind it okay only thing is we did not know how this thing really worked that is why we have like always said but in recent times what has happened is peta has you know objected this kind of thing but then until now there is no change okay and i don't think so any change will ever occur because this is an age old industry okay very very old industry so i don't think so the methods will ever change but then still we should understand that you know there are so many deaths behind this thing anyway so now what happens guys now if we allow this thing to continue Okay, if we allow this thing to continue its entire life process, yes, yes, yes. Now I am telling you now, and understand. So if you allow this thing to undergo uh, the complete process, then what happens inside this thing? You are going to see that now there is going to be change. And guys, what is this change? This is nothing but your metamorphosis. and by metamorphosis what is going to happen the caterpillar it is now going to give rise to your wings it is going to be completely a different structure altogether and then it breaks open this cocoon and then it flies off but if the cocoon is broken open the silk fibers are broken and if the silk fibers are broken then it is of no use so if you have to make silk guys you have to do it in this stage only that is how it works but then the next question someone is asking sir but if they kill everything then how will it propagate no 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 nobody is going to kill everything see some of them they will always allow to propagate let's say 90% of this they will kill 10% they will allow to propagate then this industry is going to keep on running like this otherwise if you kill everything then the industry is going to just shut down that way so this is what is going to happen guys okay
everybody all right with this thing got this part guys see in uh, remember after this caterpillar you have to add these two stages okay so one where it is eating this uh, leaf and second thing it finds a, a proper spot and then it is going to add a cocoon on top of this cell okay so these two things you just showed this thing is missing in your textbooks the pupa or the chrysalis and larvae and caterpillar okay so just keep this thing in mind Okay, but now let's try to see the next few things like, you know, who all can participate out over here and what really happens. Okay, so guys, <clears throat> this is, as I said, this is going to be a very, very old industry. So I will just mention this is like an age old industry. Okay, and who all can participate? See, there is not, you know, labor intensive work as such. So who can participate? It is going to be participated by all of them. Okay, so provides ample opportunities uh, okay it provides ample opportunities for you know even your normal people like you know even your handicaps and all okay even they can participate okay so for your disabled and handicapped people as well Plus your other normal people as well. I send in to this will become like only for the handicapped people. No. Okay. Fine. But now, like I said, which is the best silk? It is going to be your, uh, the um, mulberry silk. That is nothing but because of your bombix mori. And the inferior ones, it is going to be airy and the tussar silk. Okay. But now, here, important things that we need to take care, you know, so that we have a product of the best quality. So what are we going to look at guys? So the quality of the silk is very, very important and it can be easily debilitated if we don't take care of the moths. Okay, so the quality, the quality of the silk, okay? It first depends upon the quality of your moths. This, that is your silkworm. Okay, second thing, it also depends upon the quality of your mulberry trees. If the mulberry trees are not good or if they are like, you know, disease or something, then definitely it is also going to affect the silkworm production and the uh, fiber production. So uh, it depends upon the mulberry leaves as well, condition on the mulberry leaves or the trees. Okay. Next thing after this, guys, we need to rare this thing. So rearing and this thing, it needs a lot of skill. Okay. So rearing development and looking after this requires a lot of skill okay because what happens is with even like you know uh, you know with little amounts of negligence Okay, you will see that with little negligence, immediately this entire thing can collapse. With little negligence, the quality gets hampered. That way. So this is very, very important thing, guys. Okay. Next thing is when we talk about this silkworm larvae. Okay. So see, silkworm larvae, where are they going to be? They are going to be on the trees now. On the trees, on the plants, the mulberry trees. Now, See, these silkworms, they are an easy target for your birds because they will always come and they'll say, all right, here there are like loads of loads of silkworms. Let's have them. So if they are going to have it, then definitely, you know, you're not going to have proper amounts of production. So these silkworm larvae, always keep it in mind, they need to be protected from birds. Okay. Apart from that, these also need to be protected from other, you know, uh, predators. So other predators. Along with this, guys, what happens is we need to protect them, okay, from diseases also. Because, for example, we have some protozoan and fungal diseases. So from protozoan, fungal and viral diseases as well, okay, which affects their health and then they start dying early in life. So protozoan, viral and fungal diseases. 
Okay, so this is also one very important thing, guys. Okay, and here because of this, we need to take utmost amount of care of these cell phones because if by any chance something goes wrong, guys, the quality of silk, the production, everything is going to be hampered. And the main problem is because these are going to be living on the top of the trees. That is where the problem lies. Okay, so that way. So that's it. That is what we need to know with regards to your silk worm, guys. Okay, so everything that we need to know with regards to your sericulture. That's it. Guys, from this part, what they will ask you, they will always ask you life cycle of your uh, your uh, mulberry, uh, mulberry uh, moth or that is your bombyx mori. Okay, so keep this in mind. This is a very important life cycle. Same way when we're doing the next thing, guys, that is also going to be very important life cycle. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I forgot. Sorry. Okay, guys, I'll give you like five minutes break quickly. Just quickly go through this thing. Anybody who wishes to have some water, go to the loo. Okay, quickly come back in five minutes, guys. After that, we'll be able to do the last part that is nothing but your luck culture. Sir, if industry doesn't use these silkworms, the birds will eat them. If the birds do not utilize them, one day will come when insects and their worms will dominate since their number is greater than human and speed at which they grow. Yes, but then that is nothing but at the end, it is survival of the fittest. This is the theory of evolution, basically. Okay, so yes, it is going to ha happen that way. So basically, you know, you always need to maintain balance and nature always finds out a way to maintain balance between the predator and the prey. So that way. So same way, you know, sometimes when vegetarians, uh, vegetarians also, uh, you know, ask non-vegetarians, why do you eat chicken? Why do you eat chickens? I've been asked so many times. So the answer remains the same because if we don't eat chicken, their numbers are going to increase so much that then, you know, it's going to become a menace and someone has to control it. So that is why you're going to eat them. It is that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Guys, guys, quickly, quickly, take a break and come back quickly.
ओके चलो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट ओके चलो ओके सो गाइस द नेक्स्ट वन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव दैट इज योर लक कल्चर ओके सो लक कल्चर बेसिकली इट इज गोइंग टू गिव अ प्रोडक्ट व्हिच इज अ रेजिन लाइक थिंग ओके एंड जनरली इट इज गोइंग टू बी यूज्ड इन bangles or your ornaments so let me just give you an idea before we start talking about it i am damn sure every one of you must have seen it okay but you know because this is we are seeing it for the first time one minute i have taken the photo of the life cycle so i'll just paste that as well okay one minute i'm just pulling out a picture of that lug bangles okay so i'm sure like you know females you must be quite aware of this thing okay so what are see this is to give you an idea what we are talking about so these are the bangles which we create out of this lac you know it is somewhat like you know plasticky plasticky kind of a thing it is not exactly like plastic but uh, you know it has that you know some resin kind of a feel kind of a thing it's a little different just let me know if you have seen these kinds of bangles uh, these are like you know the very traditional ones ekdam traditional ones okay and i am just trying to find out um yeah so you will see something of this sort as well yes it has yes yes absolutely yes so you know you uh, see this thing in like you know different things embedded with different stuff and all okay but most commonly you know whatever that generally i have seen okay most of the times which i see they are something of this sort something like this like okay, there are like you know like diamond studded and all diamond studded matlab wo american diamonds ha uh, studded and all there those varieties are also present but then i believe females must be aware of this thing like okay, they are like you know a little on the fragile side though uh some people uh nay i don't know the uh, this thing lack uh and if anybody wishes to know like you know this is how they the instrument that they use to make it actually see this is the kind of thing that they will use and this what he has is this resin okay then he can add color to it and on and then he can make a uh, lac out of it that way anyway sir so guys i hope everybody has got an idea yes 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 it is good over the glass bangles yes right okay so so guys what is this lack culture what do we really need to know who is the one who is going to be involved in this thing let's try to figure this thing out guys okay so guys the first thing that we need to know is like when we talk about this lack culture sorry are re ye ka ho raha hai okay hmm. Okay, so who is the one that we are going to use now? Which organism is it going to be? So, guys, we are going to make use of the organism whose name is Tacardia laca. Okay, so Tacardia laca, or this is nothing but the lac insect. Okay, but now, guys. how are we going to get this lac like what really happens out over here so remember guys this lac is nothing but it is a resin okay basically this tacardia laca it produces the lac and lac is nothing but a resin and this resin needs a little bit of treatment to make it like you know uh, like uh, like hard kind of a thing okay but where is this resin actually coming from this resin is released from the dermal like okay, the dermal glands of the female insect 
ओके डर्मल ग्लैंड्स ऑफ फीमेल इंसेक्ट ओके फाइन चलो सो बट नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू सी हाउ इज दिस एंटायर थिंग दैट इज गोइंग टू हैपन लाइक यू नो व्हाट रियली गोस ऑन आउट ओवर देयर सो जस्ट टू टेल यू गाइस सी समटाइम्स यू मे यू मे सी सम ब्रांचेस लाइक दिस ओके सो यू हैव ब्रांचेस एंड ऑल ओके इट इज अ कॉमन थिंग ओके वी डोंट रियली अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इट इज but then what happens is you know just because we are not aware of it so you may see is there are certain branches and on top of those branches guys you are going to see some orangish thing like you know orangish colonies colonies kind of thing growing you know they don't have a proper shape but you know they grow something of this sort sometimes you think that oh this is maybe you know the ants they have made their nest out over there something of that sort or maybe you think that you know aise kuch to infection infection hai kuch to gadbad 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 it looks something of this sort and we think that oh okay there must be some infection okay but no this is nothing but your lac infestation that is what happens and guys this is the thing when we expose this thing to air okay guys when we take this lac okay this lac when it comes in contact with air basically at that time it is going to harden and it is going to become that lac whatever that we are uh, looking for okay so this thing it hardens in contact with air and this is the final lug that we are going to get and then this lug it can be like you know treated with heat once again and then you can add different colors to give you different things out over there okay but now guys if we look at this like you know when we talk about just 1 kg 1 kg of lug guys you are going to have more than 3 lakh insects inside of it because once again guys you have to kill this thing to get the lack out of it otherwise it is not possible so you have to kill this thing okay so that way but remember whenever we talk about lack lack is nothing but it is native to india meaning it originated in india and we are the largest producer of it so we are producing around 85% of the total lac production in this country uh, in the world okay 85% of total world lac production so we are the largest producer because this is indigenous to india native to india that is why okay but now guys let's try to see what really is going to happen out over here what is the life cycle then only we can move ahead so once again guys in your textbook it has been given in a very nice manner so nothing to really worry i have pulled this picture out from your textbook only so where does this thing really start guys okay so you are going to have like you know first the life is going to start with your adult male and your adult female okay so let's say we have this adult female okay now just see guys how the adult female is going to look like the adult female looks a little different she is not going to look like the adult male so you will see that this adult female she is going to first go and she is going to start infestation infestation of your branch okay now this branch it can be your babool it can be your people it can be your bale it can be any branch okay now what happens guys uh okay okay so now what is going to happen she is going to go and lay eggs okay i mean for first you are going to see that you know there is going to be your fertilization there is going to be reproduction between them and that is going to result into your uh, this thing like you know laying of eggs now she is going to come out over here and she is laying eggs out over here like this like this like this okay now what happens if the eggs are fertilized guys immediately you are going to see that the eggs they are going to start fertilizing so this is going to be the hatching thing where you are going to see the color of this thing starts changing a little bit okay so like they have said the ends okay so if you see uh, the yellow spots okay it indicates shrinking of the female and 
if you see the orange spots, then it is indicative of the eggs are about to be hatched. So this is what is going to happen, guys. So at the end, you are going to see that, oh, this is going to hatch onto your bunch. And now they uh, convert into your little larvae. Now, as they convert into the little larvae, guys, these larvae, they are going to start feeding onto this thing and they start settling onto this. The moment, okay, these larvae, we also call this thing crawlers. Once they start settling onto this, guys, they are going to convert into the next stage. See, what did I say first? You are going to have the larva stage in your uh, this thing caterpillar also. The second stage is going to be your pupa stage. So from the larvae stage, now they are going to go into the pupa stage. And in the pupa stage, now once again, they are going to settle down out over here. They are going to just attach themselves. The moment they attach themselves, this is the place where we are going to actually remove it off. And then we are going to boil it. We are going to kill it. If we allow this thing, then what will happen, guys? Then these are once again going to develop into your two things. Either it is going to convert into your female or the ones which are going to be male, they're going to convert into the male. So once again, the male is going to develop into your normal complete metamorphosis and it is going to convert into your adult male like this. She is going to convert into your adult female. And once again, the adult female is going to show you infestation. She is going to once again, uh, going to undergo fertilization. Once again, starts laying eggs. And that entire process keeps on repeating again and again, again and again, again and again. Everybody getting this thing, guys? Sure, no issues. So this is how that entire life cycle is going to be like. Okay, guys, just have a look at this thing. This uh, life cycle is asked for three marks. Okay, either it is asked for three marks for drawing or two marks only for description. Okay, everybody all right with this thing? Then I need to just talk a little bit more out over here. Okay, so guys, when we talk about this natural lark, whatever that is prepared, okay, this natural lark, it is actually contaminated. Okay, and it needs to be like, you know, uh, purified. So whenever we have this, natural luck this is always contaminated and this needs to be purified okay but now the moment you purify this thing guys after purification we are going to convert this into something that is known as shellac shellac is the pure form guys and then finally, okay, when we talk about the uses, guys, let's try to see what are the uses. So where are we going to use this thing? We're going to use this thing in your toys. We're going to use it in bangles. Okay, you're going to use this thing in bangles. You're going to use this thing in polishes. You're going to use it in inks. You're going to use this thing in your woodworks etc 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 this is something that we need to know about your luck okay so everybody all right with this thing so with this guys okay with this we are sir those toys are a kind of wood is actually made of luck yes 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 it has it is very light okay let me just show you a picture guys where a stem is uh infested then maybe you know you will get this thing get an idea okay so see guys this is what i'm like you know really trying to talk about so see this kind of infestation you will see or you know let me just show you one more picture See, this is how it will appear. Guys, from this thing, you know, uh, what they will generally ask you, they will ask you who is responsible for the production of this lac. Okay, that is going to be your, the female insect. Next thing that they are going to ask is, guys, 
who like what is really responsible for the production of lac what is that that is going to be the dermal glands like okay, the dermal glands of the female that means the dermal glands is nothing but your uh, the skin glands basically hey okay, so guys this is the removal of this thing this is how it is going to look like after your removal so see something of this sort guys something like this and just to give you a little bit idea of how do the insects look like so this is how it will generally look like guys okay so the female is like you know completely like in a little different altogether as compared to the males that way okay once again this is what this is your tacardia laca there are different types of your uh, lac cultures but then what we are going to look for is tacardia laca Okay, everybody, all right with this thing, guys? Sure, no issues. Has everybody understood this part properly? Yes. Nowadays, we don't get to see it much. Uh, why? You know, because uh, see, this is like you know, this case is uh, some kind of your like you know, old industry, you know, which is slowly, slowly fading away because plastic, glass, other metals, they have become so easily accessible that you know, people. and they have slowly slowly forgotten our traditional things so that way and that is happening with all our traditional things you know all our traditional values all our traditional stuff you know slowly slowly we are just losing it because people are not interested in uh, them uh, you know at this moment then what may happen like you know let's say hundreds of year later once again we'll refine them rediscover them and then what oh are wo to kitna acha tha wo to natural product natural product in that way so in that way so see it's the same thing with ayurveda okay what had happened see earlier we were pioneers in ayurveda then what happened slowly slowly people stopped using ayurveda they were not interested in it then they started going for allopathy now what has happened no no allopathy there are drugs there are this that you are injecting stuff into your body no 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 let's try to find out a natural alternative now what once again people are running after ayurveda is that way but ayurveda we have been working since the rushi muni is with uh, you know since the different vedas that way but then still it is always that way you know because we are always attracted to something the grass is always greener on the other side you know it's some kind of something like that yeah anyways chalo so guys once again we will stop over here with this we are done with your animal husbandry as well okay next time we will do a little bit of your mcq questions for your microbes in human welfare and animal husbandry and then we'll move ahead with the next part okay so so once again guys we'll stop over here for the day and i'll see you in the next class till then take care bye bye everybody bye bye